Hi, I'm Brainerd Carey, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about pricing your artwork. This is always an issue with artists, right? Uh, especially if you haven't sold a lot of work, how do you price it uh, compared to what? What if some works take, you know, an hour and they're gorgeous, and other works take 20 hours and they're just as beautiful, or maybe not even as beautiful? Is it by time? Is it by square inch? Is it by dimensional size, how do you price your work? So there are a number of, of ways to price work. In Praxis Center, um, if you're a member of Praxis Center, there are curators that come in every single week at the live round table and they talk about things like uh, pricing artwork or, or how, how they've related to pricing artwork. Dealers talk about that as well. So there's a few different methods. One of them is uh, the square inch method. There was a consultant that was just there uh, from Chicago, and she talked about that she sells work to corporations, to uh, homes, and uh, she always uses more or less the square inch method, which means that you know um, you you price it by the square inch. So if it's a dollar a square inch or two dollars a square inch. You measure the dimensions of your canvas, and um, and that's how you come up with the price. So, for example, a 10 inch by 10 inch canvas would be 100 square inches. That would be at a dollar square inch. That's a hundred dollars for a 10 inch by 10 inch canvas. Um, it's up to you. That's one method, right? But the thing about that method is, let's say you're using that method, and and these are just numbers that I'm putting out there for the sake of. Of easy arithmetic so I can explain this. Let's say it's a dollar square inch and so a 10 by 10 inch canvas is a hundred dollars. Whether it took you 10 hours or 10 minutes, it's a hundred dollars. Um, obviously as it goes up in size, the price starts starts getting, getting pretty dramatically in, increased, right? Um, so let's say you're selling this work this way for a year. You're selling things for a dollar square inch. Um, every year, at least every year, it should go up at least 10 to 20 percent. That means after the first year of selling work for a dollar a square inch, it goes up 10 percent. It's now a dollar ten a square inch. The year after that, it goes up again, so dollar twenty-five and more and more. That's how essentially your work will increase in price. Every year it should go up 10 to 20 percent. Okay, so that's one method, um, and that's the method that this uh, one art advisor talked about very recently in Praxis Center. Uh, Michelle Ruiz is her name. So um, square inch pricing, it doesn't have to be a dollar a square inch. You could start at two or three dollars a square inch. I would base it on whatever you've sold artwork for before. So if you sold a piece in the past of a certain size, and um, maybe two or three of those, and you sold them for a certain amount of money, determine how much that would be per square inch. It takes a little arithmetic there, right? Just um, figure out how many square inches are in that canvas or that work on paper, print, whatever it is, and figure out what your square inch price is. This is one way to know, right? Um, now there's other methods. There's not just the square inch method. There's other methods of doing it. Some people also use the general size of the canvas, right? An eight by 10 inch canvas is $200. Um, I don't know, uh, 11 by 14 is 400 And as they get bigger, the price starts growing dramatically. That's kind of creating a sort of ballpark figure, right? Um, in terms of what sizes you think will generate what money. So if you sold a number of 20 by 24 inch canvases, works on paper, prints, um, and they've sold for, let's say, $500 or $1,000, that is your baseline. That's where to work from. Um, even if you think this is worth a lot more or, or your buyers don't have any money, it doesn't matter. Once you've sold work for a certain amount, don't sell it for less than that. That's your baseline. Now it only goes up from here. So whether you use square inch pricing or dimensional pricing, um, that's up to you. So there's one more thing that's really important about pricing. Um, when you're selling through a gallery, or even through an art consultant, which again, we have in Praxis Center, um, they're going to take a 50% cut of what you sell the work for. So let's say you're using the square inch pricing. The question is, is that square inch pricing retail, right? 
or is it wholesale? Which means, let's say it's a dollar a square inch and a 10 by 10 inch canvas is $100. Um, then the gallery or the art consultant is going to get $50 of that. Now that means even if you sell directly to a customer from your studio, they pay $100. And if you also sell through a gallery, the customer pays $100 and now you get half that, that's 50. That may seem a little confusing, but this is a really critical and important point about pricing because your prices have to be the same everywhere. If a collector buys an artwork from you for $100, they certainly shouldn't get it for less or more at a gallery. And the reason for that is because the opposite would frustrate them. Imagine the collector goes to a gallery, buys a canvas for $1,000. And then he finds out that you sell the same canvas on your website for $500. Completely undermines the sale. They lose um, confidence in you as an artist who has a market value, and they'll also be upset with the gallery. So when you're coming up with your pricing, it should take into account that if this sells at a gallery, you're willing to take half of that price. Um, and that's, that's really, you know, the big picture of pricing your artwork. Um, there's, there's of course exceptions to this. There's always exceptions to the rule. For example, let's say you're making miniatures, uh, anything from, uh, I don't know, miniature painting to something that's incredibly painstaking and small. Obviously square inch isn't the best way to price that. Um, if an enormous amount of work is going into something very small, uh, it should be more. Uh, your, your baseline should start higher. And, um, and so that's, that's also, you know, a little bit outside what we're talking about, right? The baseline changing because there really is a lot of effort going into these incredibly small works that you're making. So you can, you can take that into account, the amount of work you're going into it. But I would try to keep it consistent. So um, if you're using the square inch pricing or dimensional or even the, the structure that I'm talking about now, all your prices shouldn't vary widely. It shouldn't be like, well, that little piece is you know, five by five inches and it's a thousand, whereas the 10 by 10 is a hundred because I put more work into, you know, to the smaller work. That gets a little confusing for collectors. If you put a ton of work into a small piece, um, the larger piece should also be, in most cases, more money um, because that's how people think about work, right? Bigger pieces cost more money. But you're the artist, you know how much money you put, how much work you put into smaller pieces. So take that into account. That's, that's really important. Um, there's one other point to consider when pricing work. Uh, let's say you're, you're right now you're selling through your studio directly or through your website. You can use all the methods I've discussed, including thinking about when you sell in galleries, you will sell it for this price and take half the money. Um, but there's something else to consider. You probably want to be in a gallery. It's much easier to sell work if you have a gallery. Not only is it easier to sell work if you have a gallery, it's easier to sell work if you have several galleries, which is possible. The method to get one gallery is the same method to get multiple galleries. And if you have enough art, they can all be selling your work at once. However, every gallery has what they call a sweet spot for the kind of work they sell. And this is really, just as with artists, their own psychology. It's not as though there really is a sweet spot where artwork tends to be bought between 500 and 1,000 um, and less between 1,000 and 5,000 or 10,000 and up. There's no um, sweet spot in general, but galleries have one. So if a gallerist was being honest with you and you went in there and you said to them, hi, I'm interested to know, and I'm not saying to do this, but if you were able to say to them, um, as a fellow business person, I'd like to know what is the sweet spot for sales here? They'd say, well, uh, something like occasionally we sell things for, you know, over 7,000, but it seems to me between five and 7,000 is the sweet spot for our collectors. That's where the majority of work sell for. That doesn't mean they have works, don't have works for a thousand or less or works for over 7,000, but most of the sales come in between five and $7,000. The way to know the sweet spot of a gallery in terms of their price range is to walk into that gallery and look at the prices of work. If the prices aren't on the wall, you can say to the gallerist, do you have a price list? 
It doesn't matter if you're an artist, you might still buy the work. You're just asking them for a price list. Check out the prices. Um, you'll see that some of them may have red dots next to them or they're marked as sold. That means that's probably the sweet spot. Look if there's an average in there. And the reason it's important to know this sweet spot of what a gallery sells for is because if they decide to do business with you and you're way outside of that sweet spot, no matter how much they like your work, they're going to have trouble handling it. It's a psychological issue for them. They think we tend to sell work between, let's say, five and $7,000, and I'm just throwing this out as an example, and they see your work is all under $1,000. Not only are they going to make less from your work, but that's not what their collectors are used to paying. That's not what they're used to selling. That's not what they're comfortable selling with. If your artwork is all over 7,000, beyond their sweet spot, they might take a chance on you on a few pieces initially, but that's also a less, less comfortable for them. You're outside of their comfort zone, essentially. So uh, that's one more thing to take into account. If you're moving on to the step of working with multiple galleries, which is ideal because that's how you'll begin to get an income, not just one gallery, not just through your site, but multiple galleries. And that could include boutiques, restaurants, any place that could sell work. Um, if, you're, if you're going to do that, then it's good to know what the sweet spot is. And again, you find that out by going to those places, looking at the price lists that they have there. And, um, and that's one way to, to not price your work, but to know that if your work fits there or not. Right, because you don't want to just increase all your prices to fit into that gallery. Um, but if you are selling it, well, then great. You know, um, do do that if you can. But what you want to do is keep your prices consistent, and you want to work with galleries who um, who sell work for the price that you're selling it for, or a little higher, of course, because you want to sell more work for a higher price. Don't worry about what you think your collectors can afford or can't afford. That's a completely psychological projection, what we think other people can afford. And it's usually based on our own relationship with, with money and, and our own psychology surrounding that. So what other people can afford is up to them. Uh, people who have money have credit cards. If they like something enough, they'll buy jewelry, a car, all kinds of things on payment plans that are beyond their means. So if they like it enough, they can buy it. Um, don't worry about what your collectors can afford in terms of coming up with a strategy for pricing. Again, the pricing should be based on one of the strategies I've talked about, either the square inch pricing, either dimensional pricing, or uh, third was kind of by the, um, by the amount of work that's gone into it, but that should still be graduated. It should still be you know, um, a scale that goes up as it gets larger. And the fourth way of pricing is once you're working with a gallery and they have a sweet spot and you're in that sweet spot, that's your price range, especially if you've sold one thing at that range. The big picture here is as soon as you've sold one piece, no matter how much it is, that is now your market price. Keep increasing it by 10% every time you can at least every year, but you could try increasing it 10% with every single sale. And you could let, let collectors know, my prices have gone up 50% since last year. They'll like to know that because that means that uh, you raise your prices. You can tell them they go up 10% or whatever you want to say, 20% every year. So when they buy work, they know it's not going to be less worth less in a year. It's actually going to be worth more. Um, this is important to the psychology of the buyer. I hope this helps in pricing your work. If you have any questions, feel free to ask here. If you're not a member of Praxis Center, there's a link to join. Otherwise, um, for all members, the roundtable discussions are where we talk about these issues in depth. And it's also where you meet curators and art consultants who give their own opinions and strategies regarding pricing and sales. I wish you well with your artistic practice and, um, and with any future endeavors in the arts.